Hey, I'm Gaur, and I have quite a lot uh, to tell you. Essentially, I have released updates for every single one of my DC tills, plus I've released seven new ones. Seven, damn, that's a lot. Um, so that makes a total of 40 DC tills in my store, which uh, is a lot. Uh, so yeah, this is going to be an overview of uh, all of, not all of, but the main, the major changes that I've made. And um, I guess I'll start off with the new stuff. So first off, the tool I'm most excited about is uh, the Corrector, which um, essentially is an all-in-one primaries tool. Personally, I have completely forgotten the trackballs on my mini panel. I have just replaced them. Uh, so they don't get in the way, and I'm using this DC till for all primary corrections now. It gives you all the familiar controls, like exposure, which can be either linear gain, which is exposure in stops, or offset, or just normal gain. For flare, you have linear offset, or lift, and same goes for all of the different controls in here, where you can change what the underlying operation is depending on what you like to use most. So I do want to emphasize that the temp and tint controls are not the temp and tint you might be used to. They are just, I guess, the best names I came up with to describe what they do. But really, temp is uh, just linear gain or whichever operation you choose on a certain hue vector, just moving the whole image in one direction, or the opposite, and tint is just 90 degrees from that, so on the essentially other axis. Uh, so yeah, just to make sure that you understand what that does. Uh, it's, it's like you would be using linear gain or offset or gain with your trackball, but I guess in that sense it's more precise because you're always following the same line. There's um, the guides DC till, which uh, just gives you different guides, for example, uh, vertical and horizontal center guides, um, safe zones, and also aspect ratio guides on the color page. So I'm not stopping you from using it on the edit page, because you can just take an adjustment clip, plop it on top of everything, and place it on there as well if you'd like. Then I have uh, two versions of a new tool called Hue Contrast. Um, the Just Hue Contrast, as it's called, is uh, just a single hue qualification band version, and 6Vector has the usual 6 uh, hue bands that you should be used to from my other 6Vector tools. And what Hue Contrast gives you is the ability to change hue based on luminance. So it kind of creates an S-curve on the hue versus uh, luminance curve that you don't actually have access to on the color page usually, and uh, it allows you to create color contrast or hue contrast where there was none before. For example, let's take foliage. You can add a bit of orange or yellow to the highlights and some blue to the lowlights or shadows. So I'd say that's quite a useful one for look creation. Uh, then I have two versions of a new tool called Patches, the HSL and the RGB versions. Patches is just a tool to essentially give you a reference point on your vector scope when, um, for example, matching product shots. So you would th place this DC tool at the very end of your node tree, and um, it allows you to, just using whatever tools you usually use, just reference and move things into place according to this, uh, ac according to a select RGB value or HSS value. So I'd say that's pretty useful. And last but not least, when it comes to new tools, there's uh, the bit depth simulator, which uh, actually was requested from me uh, by Daria Fasoon for educational purposes. So I'd say educational purposes are the main uh, use for this tool, just to see how your footage or how your operations would act on lower bit depth footage. So just place this at the very beginning of your node tree and crank down the bit depth to see what would happen if your footage was lower bit depth. So quite useful. And 8-bit is not the lowest you can go. You can bring it right down to one bit. So that is quite fun to, to play around with. Then moving on to the major changes with existing tools. Uh, first off, I have actually created a new pack in addition to my, well, current four packs, I guess. 
there's uh, currently the digital pack, which just has everything. Then there's uh, the demo pack, which is kind of the demo version of the digital pack, except it doesn't have some tools that would still be useful even with a watermark, for example, false color, because because you don't render your footage out with false color, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, then um, there's uh, currently the six vector pack, uh, which just has the six vector tools, including now the six vector hue contrast. And finally, there has been the uh, free details pack, which just includes all of my free details in one place, so that's really nice. But now I have a look creation pack, which includes my favorite look creation tools, except the six vectors, because those have their own pack already. Uh, those being filmic contrast, hue bezier and hue s-curve split tones, and saturation shaper. So when you pair that with the six vector details pack, I'd say you are set when it comes to look development. Then I have also expanded the support for different transfer functions, now including Apple Log, Leica Log, Sony S-Log2, and Filmlight T-Log. Plus I also moved Linear all the way to the top, so it would be quicker to access if you need that. Then uh, I have created manuals for every single DCTL, which, uh, yeah, they are not the most comprehensive yet, but I'm working on it, and uh, I'd say, you know, creating 40 different manuals is uh, quite a lot of work already, so I hope you're okay with what you got now, and I'll try to improve them over time. Then I added no eye conversions of every DCTL in the demo pack, so for panel users, uh, you can try out the details also in your panel, especially now that uh, it seems Blackmagic is not supporting um, non-standard characters in digital like parameter names anymore. Because if you have, well, the icons which really are emojis, so non-standard characters, then um, it just shows you a default name like slider1 or float slider1, I guess. So it isn't very nice and there's no error message, so you don't actually know what's going wrong. I have tried to improve the usability of all these details by, for some of them, changing the order of uh, the sliders or the controls to have the most used ones at the top. For example, with filming contrast, I brought the black point and white point controls up underneath contrast because those are the ones you would probably reach for first. And I also removed the dividers from some details because they were taking up extra space, especially for again, uh, panel users, so it didn't really make sense to have those. Then moving on, I lowered the saturation of uh, all on-screen curve displays. For example, the split tone tools have uh, the RGB, the underlying RGB curve shown, and uh, well, I changed my ODT, meaning output device transform, meaning the last color space transform, in my node tree for color management, and I switch it to something that handles very saturated colors quite differently from the built-in one, and as such, um, they kind of sort of turned white, the curves, uh, and didn't really work. So I just lowered the saturation for all of the curves, so even those who are using these different kind of ODTs should be still able to view the curves. Then Filmic Contrast got a new fill depth control that reduces contrast below middle gray, and uh, I'd say it gives a very nice effect that you can't really achieve uh, in another way. And also added a flare control that uh, lets you bring down the black point after raising the black point, which at first might not make sense, but uh, the way I tend to use it is I use black point to compress the shadows, and then I use this new flare control to bring the actual black point back down while keeping a lot of the info compressed down there, so it gives a bit of a different look, and again, more possibilities when it comes to shaping your contrast curve. Then Saturation Shaper got a complete rewrite, and I really hope that I have been able to capture the most useful parts of the tool, and so you're not losing out on anything from the previous version, but I have tried to make it much more clearer, as now you are working with all the different controls on two curves, a saturation versus saturation curve, and a luminance versus saturation curve. So yeah, do give me feedback on that. And when it comes to six vector tools, I have added uh, two new sliders to every tool, those being rotate vectors and blend. Rotate vectors just allows you to rotate or shift all of the qualifiers at once. 
which should speed up the setup of this tool. And uh, the blend is, uh, just as the name suggests, a master blend of uh, the intensity of the effect. Then another thing with the six vector tools, I combine saturation and subsaturation into a single digital, because why bother with two? Now you just have one slider to switch between the two, and you can fade and see uh, where you like to place that. And finally, with the identity cube generator, I have added blanking options and a location option. So location is top or bottom, and blanking is for more advanced workflows, where I'll have to make a separate video about this, but I have set up my node tree in a way where I can view the look creation or look development part of my tree in Nobe Omniscope on a 3D cube, but not get any of that information except the cube itself. So that is a really useful thing that previously you could really only do in Fusion, and I have kind of sort of found a way to do it in uh, Omniscope in the color page. So at this point, you might be wondering how to get these uh, new tools, these new updates. And if you have bought a tool previously, you can just head over to my uh, DCTL store, store.powerh.com, and hit the uh, view previous orders here button. And that'll bring you to a list of all the previous orders. And even though the version number on the product itself might be outdated, the download version uh, should be correct. So yeah, just look out for that. And uh, if you have bought a pack, if you have the six vector pack, then you can get uh, the uh, new six vector hue contrast for free. Just download the pack again. And if you have the whole pack uh, with every digital, then you will also get the author new DC tools for free, so that's really nice. And if you're wondering if you can try out the DC tools, yes, I have a demo pack, uh, again, link in the description below, and you just get pretty much all the tools just with a watermark on top. So I've tried to make it, make it as useful as possible where you can try it out on your own footage. It doesn't expire. You can just play around with it, and if you like it, then uh, you can go ahead and buy some of them. And last but not least, um, the DC Till Pack, the one that includes everything, has increased in price. And that is because always when I release new DC Tills, they get added to the main pack. And as such, you know, the price increases. Though still, um, both the whole DC Till Pack and the um, new Loot Creation Pack, well, I guess as well as the Six Vector Pack, all of those, if you buy the pack, it is quite a bit cheaper than buying them individually. So you can run some calculations yourself to see that. Uh, but yeah, what's a video? Uh, I hope that uh, you like the updates. If you have any suggestions, feedback, good or bad, leave it down below, or you can email me at support at And um, well, see you next time.